Hello, everybody. Welcome to the NGA Hooters Year End Show. I'm Lee Moore, and for the next one hour, we're going to take you back over 1998 on the Hooters Pro Golf Tour. Again, you're going to be watching some of the outstanding young professional golfers in the world. We're going to take you through 10 events that we televised this year. You're going to see the young champions at work. We're also going to tell you about that big half million dollar naturally fresh winner's points championship. Yep, a great young player out of the state of Texas won it all and he did it in championship fashion. We got an exciting show for you today. It's a look back at 1998 on the NGA Hooters Tour. You won't want to miss this one. This broadcast is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants, home of world-famous chicken wings and the nearly world-famous Hooters Girls. And by naturally fresh, pure spring mountain water. All water is not pure. Taste the quality of naturally fresh, pure spring water. By Jackaroo Sauce. If you just got sauce, you ain't got Jack. And by smooth, rich-tasting Michelob. Beer or Michelob. In our first televised event of the year, we were at our home course, beautiful Whitewater Country Club. The winner, Garrett Willis, a young man out of the state of Tennessee with a wonderful future. That's right, Lee. We have Garrett Willis here on the green at the par 5, 15th to save his par. Well, this young man was playing so well in the event at Atlanta, a place where he met disaster a couple of years ago. So. He's enjoying the moment and he's at the 16th tee. It's a par three and this two years ago, he double bogey to really send him on his way into that spiral when he lost in a playoff. And he's safely on the green. When did uh, it, you know, it seem apparent that you were sort of special as a golfer uh, in high school, any wins? Uh, what were the kind of things that started saying, you know, this guy's a little better than ordinary? Well, I always thought to myself that I was pretty good, but I really hadn't gotten in many uh, big tournaments. And I felt like the the tournament that I played in the Dallas City Junior the summer before I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, played really well, and then moved into the to, into a new high school in '92. Excuse me, the fall of '91, and uh, played some played on a really good high school golf team. Uh, I shot 65 in the districts. Uh, my senior year and then went on to win state and uh, played really well there shot five under and at the time was uh, it tied the record of the all-time best score ever shot and then the letters kept coming in and the uh, college coaches uh, were calling me and that really uh, gave me an opportunity to go to school and get an education and play golf and then my golf just kind of took off from there and now here's Garrett's attempt at 16 for birdie what a great golf hole this is at Whitewater hmm. Well, he said it's supposed to break. At the 17th, Garrett's second shot. He just really had things going very well. As you see right there is Garrett now for the birdie. And again, that little wind effort there with the arm did not help. He did most everything right in this event. Garrett Willis. Here's his attempt at the 18th. His third shot, a three shot hole. And uh, this young man, again, if you notice those last three shots on the green, everything close. Nice little stroll up the 18th. And now we see his attempt at birdie to go to 17 under par. He's got this one in the bag. On a golf course that he gets revenge on, and that's it. 17 under par, he wins uh, this one. 
And he's a happy young fella. Let's take a look at that final leaderboard, Willis. Your winner by three over Zorkic. And it was Gardner, Kamen, Winship, Brian Slevin at minus 10. And yes, I do uh, particularly like this golf course. Last year, uh, excuse me, 96 was the first year I played here. I played really well, had a couple bad breaks coming down the stretch, but left with a lot of good memories, left with a lot of good thoughts, and actually learned a lot. And I think the learning process that I've gone through over the last couple years is really going to pay off in the future. And this is actually a, a very special tournament for me now that my parents have been here to watch me win. They haven't been present since an amateur tournament. Uh, I've got my girlfriend Jennifer here with me. First time she's had the opportunity to watch me win. And some of my other friends out here. And uh, I'd also like to say thanks to Whitewater, uh, Bob Brooks, and everybody else, Tim Singer and his staff. Uh, the golf course was in great shape. I don't think I heard a single complaint all week. And if it was up to me, I'd play out here every week and cancel all the rest of the tournaments. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And here's how the points looked after five events on top. Scott Medlin at 709, followed by Cayman, Double Z, Winship, Wilson, and Jason Karen. And let's check out your winners through the first six events of the year. Kevin Blanton at Jacksonville, then it's Jason Larson in Mobile, Dickie Thompson in Columbia, Mark Wilson in Greenville, South Carolina, Garrett Willis at Atlanta, and Darren Stiles in Monroe, Louisiana. Hi, this is Amber from Hooters Myrtle Beach. Don't go away, we'll be right back. What they say, sauce sells. think that the Australian Outback is full of young, wild ranch hens called jackaroos. Fact is, jackaroos are quite civilised. Until they grab hold of the big, bold taste of their favourite jackaroo barbie sauce. Ah, uh, then things can get a bit out of hand. Every jackaroo knows. If you don't have jackaroo barbie sauce, you ain't got jack. This broadcast is brought to you by Hewlett Packard. From Atlanta, our next event on television came to you from Jackson, Mississippi. A youngster out of Missouri won by shooting fantastic numbers in the final two rounds. He came from way back in the field to show what a champion he is. Corey Bowman, what a week it was for him in Jackson, Mississippi. I tell you, the man was a birdie machine at number two to get to minus 14. Yeah, they had uh, a lot of rough weather to deal with in, uh, in Jackson. But uh, nothing rough for Corey about the final day. The birdie barrage continued at hole number four. Here's Bowman to get to 15 under par. Corey, the former All-American out of Baylor University, all-conference also. And now his second shot coming into hole number six. Everything about his play in the final 36 holes was almost perfect, and he told me that later on. Witness that shot. Which made it easy for this, his putt to get to 16 under par. You 
You know, the golfers like to say that uh, when you got that focus, just keep with it. The birdies continued at the 10th hole. This for 17 under par. Easy as pie, as they say. He just had everything going his way. At number 12, his second shot. And he talked about the momentum. And uh, the good thing about the 36 hole day, if you if you shoot a good round, you know, in the morning round, you can carry your momentum over in, in the afternoon. And and I bogeyed my first hole this afternoon, and and birdie number two, and then from there it was just it, it was easy again. Bowman was totally in control at number 12. This to get to 18 under par. Corey's best finish prior to coming into here was uh, a couple of years ago over in Decatur, where he had a chance to win on the last day. His fine play continued at 17 for birdie and 20 under par. You know, some of the other guys back there, as you'll see on the final leaderboard also, were not rolling over and playing dead. He was just playing so well. Out of Springfield, Missouri, Corey Bowman spent a lot of time on the leaders to this last year. At the home hole, his second shot in. It's a good golf hole here at the Caroline Golf Club. Uh, a relatively new course, first time that the Hooters Tour has played here. Good media coverage there as Corey now has that chance. They can't all be birdies. Some have to be for par. This at the home hole. Well, don't tell Corey that. And don't tell the rest of the field that as we check out now our final leaderboard in Jackson, Mississippi, as you look at a happy winner. And here's a look at that final leaderboard in the Harris Casino Classic in Jackson, Mississippi, Bowman, Zorky, Short, Dice, and Biddick, and Heights. Shooting 15 under today, bud. You got on a roll after starting off with a bogey. Yeah, I didn't uh, dream about coming out here and shooting 15 under for 36 holes, but I got off to a great start, and um, it was an advantage because after you have a good round, you don't have to go home and sleep. You can just go ahead and eat lunch and go right back out and do it again. And uh, I thought that th playing 36 holes, I could just carry the momentum over and uh, played a good round this, this afternoon, too, and shot 66. Uh, Corey, Zoran Zorkic did not let you rest there, and also there was another 18 under par, but over there at 17, you sort of had to get it in overdrive a little bit. Yeah, 17, I was just playing for par, to be honest with you, and I uh, rolled a 30-footer in, kind of just trying to trying to play for three and uh, accidentally made it, so uh, <laughs> that, that was pretty nice. Here's how the points looked after seven events. Double Z on top, a little over 10-20, followed by Medlin, Cayman, Heights, Karen, and Short. Our 1997 Player of the Year was Steve Ford. 1998 did not start out all that great for Steve. Really, he didn't hit full stride until we got to Louisville, Kentucky. At Seneca, he was our champion. At the 14th, Steve Ford's second shot. Steve uh, talked about not playing well coming into this event. He was quite disappointed early in the season. Here we see his putt for par at 14. One other guy did not want to give up easily. He had won the week before. You're looking at Derek Brinker, and uh, he was continuing his hot play. Here he is at the 15th, his third shot in, and very nicely put, Lee. Yeah, we give those kind at, uh, out at Newburn Country Club. Steve Ford wouldn't go away. Third shot here on 15. Two really, really good strikers of the golf ball involved in this. This for birdie. That put him just one shot behind the leader. From Evansville, Indiana, Eric Brinker, Steve Ford from Melbourne, Florida. This for par to remain at 10 under. Steve played his collegiate golf at Georgia Southern. At 16. This for birdie and to get to minus 11. This would really come back to serve him well right down the road here, just a couple of holes. Remember this putt, Steve. 
Leads by two. He had to check that out. That that hole there did not yield that many birdies at uh, Seneca, a great old golf course in Kentucky. At the home hole, this is the third shot of Ford. This hole gave everyone problems all day long. Good turnout, good weather. Again, Marty Storch and his people did a great job in Louisville. That's Brinker from the apron. Yeah, he was hoping to find a miracle there to get the ball in the hole. For par, Ford at 18. Remember, he leads by two at this moment. He needed it. That cushion provides the win. And of course, it's not going to be said and done until Brinker finishes out at 18. Well, the fat lady has started to sing, but we will allow Derek to finish his work. All right. And he did. Congratulates the winner. Steve, it's great to stand here. I know how much winning means to you. Yeah, I've played pretty sorry this year. And uh, last week, I, I virtually gave up the third round, and, and I was going to withdraw. And I said, well, you just need to hang in there, and, and you know, maybe it will help you in the future to, to play a good round on Sunday. So went out there the last round and tried as hard as I could, and, and it ended up that it helped me this week. So uh, I don't know what it is. I, I like this golf course a lot. and. Uh, I enjoy Louisville. I enjoy Bowling Green. I've, I've played well in the state. And uh, my golf coach is from here, too. So, you know, it's kind of fun to win it for him. So, Well, and I know Carly likes that, right, Carly? You like to see your daddy win, right? Mm. Can you say? <laughs> Can you talk? I know that next year she'll be talking a lot. Oh, yeah. Our winner is Steve Ford at 10 under par. We're at the Report Graphite Classic in Louisville, Kentucky. And again, your winner is Steve Ford. Almost halfway through the season, after 10 events, here's how your points looked. Scott Medlin on top, followed by Zoran Zorkic, Jason Karen, Mark Wilson, Swartz, and Bob Heinz. Hi, this is Kim from South Myrtle Beach Hooters. There's more golf action coming your way next. Finding the best bottled water can be very confusing. At first glance, all water looks the same. But if you scientifically precipitate out the solids, you discover all water is not equal. Introducing naturally fresh, pure spring mountain water, refreshingly pure. This naturally fresh spring water adds extra quality to the all natural goodness of every naturally fresh product. Make the clear choice. Naturally fresh, pure spring mountain water. This broadcast is brought to you by Rapport Composites, premium quality graphite shafts, and by Top Flight, the longest ball. Early in the season, the man most dominant on the Hooters Pro Golf Tour had to be the guy they call Double Z, Zoran Zorkic. He really had it going great, especially when he won the event at Sykeston, Missouri. 
Here is Double Z at the 12th, stands at 19 under this chip lee for Eagle. He was, again, that proverbial birdie machine in this tournament. Amazing play this week. We saw a lot from him early in the year, and then he kind of faded on us a little. Yeah, toward the end of the year, he did uh, had some trouble late in the season. Cost him some money. He is from Australia, now makes his home in Texas. Guy seems to be disappointed with par out here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you hit it, uh, you know, eight feet, ten feet, six feet, five feet, whatever, and, you know, you expect to make it. You know, you hit a good shot, you need to capitalize on Because, I mean, there's an awful lot of good talent out here, and you can't really fall asleep in any putt or chip or drive or whatever out there. This was Zorkic's birdie attempt at the par 3 17th. That's a great putting stroke. Just a little forward press there. That didn't happen too many times that week in uh, Sykeston. The Boot Hill golf course, a great community, a great place to play a golf tournament. They do a wonderful job. Second trip in there. And Zorkic had to settle for his par on that hole. Next up, Heinz at 17. Trying to make his birdie at the par 317. You know, if you were keeping a track on Bob Heinz out of Clearwater, Florida and Yale University, you would just see this guy at this particular time, you just knew it was a matter of time until he was going to put himself into the winner's circle. Got his good luck shirt on. We talked a lot about the shirt throughout the year. He must have heard us. He got rid of it late in the year. And that right there would put him into a tie with Zorkic at 21 under par. We had us a tournament going. And we had a nice gathering, you know, to watch. And uh, here was a shot. He put himself almost out of this hole. It hit a golf cart and stayed in bounds, and this was his third shot back to try to save par. Yeah. Which yeah. Would have become really important. That was a wonderful play right there. Not a bad shot from a pretty tough lie. Well, that was the story as you watch Zoran go after a birdie that will end it all if he can make this. He did not. Leaves it short. Now, Heinz has to convert his for par in order to force a playoff. The Boot Hill Golf Club in Sykeston, Missouri, second time for the tour to be in there. Just, a, again, a wonderful place to play golf. And that was how close Bob Heinz came to being in a playoff. And he loses to Zorn Zorki. Zorn, on behalf of 11 other members of the Delta Pontiac Performers Group, We'd like to present this check to you for $25,000 for a well-deserved victory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's that's something, $25,000. Usually we say $15,000. Harold has dug deep now to find some extra money this week. I thought you said Tim did. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'd like to thank uh, Pontiac for uh, what they've done with this tournament. Uh, it's been a great week. The people have been really receptive towards this. Uh, it's created a really nice atmosphere closer to a, you know, a real golf tournament all the TV and all the people, grandstands. It's been a nice week. So your champion at 21 under par is Zoran Zorkic. He makes his home in Texas. He comes from Australia, true champion here in Sykeston, Missouri. Here's how your naturally fresh points championship looked after 12 events. Double Z on top, followed by Medlin, Heights, Campbell, Swartz, and Wilson. The biggest purse this tour played for this year was at Decatur, Alabama, the Decatur Daily Tour Championship. And was it ever a show? It came down to a playoff between Bob Heinz and Scott Medlin. It had all the drama of any big professional golf tournament you could ever want. Heinz prevailed with an unbelievable finish. We begin with Scott Medlin at the ninth. This is one of the favorite stops of the players, the Decatur Daily Tour Championship. 
Meanwhile, Heights at the par 5, 12th. This for Eagle. And to get to 16 under, you can't do it any better than that. And he was flying at this time. Meanwhile, Scott Medlin said, here's what you have to do in this case. I think the key is not playing against the other players. You got to play against the course. You got to try to beat it every day, you know, four or five under, you know, every day. That's usually pretty good. But as long as I don't watch what the other guys are doing, I didn't watch the scoreboard at all yesterday, you know, so that's what I try to do. At 12, Medlin for birdie. And that puts him one back of heights. Like watching a tennis match going back and forth, back and forth. At 17, here was the approach of Medlin. Well, he had a lot of work to do very quickly to put himself in real strong contention. And did he with shots like that? At the home hole, Medlin needs birdie to force a playoff. Just a great cut six iron from 165, 170 yards, plays it perfect. Huge putt in the whole tie ball game. Heinz and Medlin. $35,000 is what the winner got in this one. Now Heinz at 18, the first to tee on the playoff hole. Here he is on the green. This putt is yeah. so unreal. Unreal. 65 feet away. He doesn't even believe it. He almost wants to apologize, but uh, Scott Medlin, who was really playing good golf at that time, had this to tie. And believe me when I tell you, this brought the crowd to its feet. Listen. Wow. That was so close to another tie and force another hole. Your champion, Bob Heinz. And here's how they finished. Heinz, your playoff champion, followed by Medlin, Campbell, Dyson, Skinner, and five at 10 under. Oh, we couldn't be more pleased with uh, the way it finished, and, and Bob is obviously a deserving winner. So we just couldn't be more pleased how it finished out. And Bob, I know that uh, you can find a use for this money. You know, coming here to play in this championship, they've always made it special. 25000 always been the paycheck to the winner until this year, and Don Kincaid dug deeper in his pockets and said, I got an extra 10 over there to make it 35000 You provided the thrills. In that playoff with Scott Medlin, and uh, believe me, that putt will run through your mind a long time, but I know you're happy to be standing up here with this check and this win. Well, I think the whole day was just good timing. I mean, to, to put it all together on a special week like Decatur, where of course there's extra money, but there are, there are extra people as well uh, out here to make it a special tournament. So I'm just, I'm not sure how I feel yet. I think when we get in the van and start driving home, I'll be...